Hi, my name is Andy Karkowski. I'm the parts and service manager here at Creators. This is a demonstration video on how to set up and pop on your new Creators Mach 5 popper. The first thing you want to do when you get your machine is to unbox it. Uh, after you get it unboxed, you want to make sure you remove all the packaging tape uh, that's been placed inside the machine. You also want to remove the supply kit, which is corn bin that you see down here. I already have removed all that, the contents of that bin and placed it on the table. Let me show you what's included in that kit. Corn measure, oil measure, salt container. Your popcorn scoop, you have another smaller salt scoop. You'll get the receptacle for the machine and then you also get a sample of, of our inside kettle cleaner. Inside the bin, the light bulbs, the heat lamps, will also be packed in there. There's two of them. I have already have one installed. I'm going to go ahead and install the second one. Okay. Once you get everything unpacked and all the tape off of the machine, you want to be certain that you have the proper power requirements for your machine. Uh, all that is specified on the serial plate, which is located on the support column uh, of the machine. It's also listed in the manual uh, of the popper, which is packed inside that bin. Uh, once the pop proper power has been supplied, then you can plug in your machine. I'm going to go through the circuits here just to show you what each of these switches control. Uh, let me start on this side here. The first switch is the kettle heat switch. When I turn it on, you'll see the light of the switch comes on. If you look up on top here, I'm going to go ahead and open the cabinet door so you can see inside here a little bit better. You'll see the indicator light that indicates that the kettle is heating and then the digital controller which is uh, showing you the temperature of the, the kettle. And I'll get a little bit more into that on, on adjusting it when we get into the popping uh, uh, portion of the video. The second switch is the agitator switch. That's going to turn on the motor, uh, the agitator motor, and turn, it's going to uh, turn the uh, stir blade, which is inside the, the pan there, to mix the ingredients so we get a good popping. The exhaust switch uh, turns on the exhaust fan, which is located on top of the machine here. That'll filter the smoke and steam that's being generated when you're popping corn through some filters uh, up in top, uh, on top of the machine here. Out, the, uh, out through the exhaust blower, out through the top of the machine. The next switch is the corn conditioner switch. That's the switch that is supplying heat into the cabinet. That will allow the, the corn to stay crispy and crunchy because it's going to dehumidify the cabinet, take the, uh, the moisture out and dry the corn out so it stays crunchy and fresh tasting. It will also warm the corn a little bit too to keep it warm. And all that is blown through this perforated screen here. It blows the air from underneath here through the corn uh, to keep it dry. The next switch is the light switch. When we turn that on, it turns on the halogen lights that illuminate the cabinet. Also the heat lamps that are located on the, on the back side of that machine there. And also your lighted sign if you have that option. Uh, there's also uh, several other options with an LED sign which is also available. Uh, that switch controls that portion of the machine. The last switch that you see here is the pump switch. That will supply power to your pump. And then up on a support column here, you have your delivery switch that when you depress it, will deliver the oil into the kettle uh, for your popping. And we'll show you how to make that adjustment here shortly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the pump up. Uh, there's three uh, different options available for the pump. We have our 7700 series pail pump. We have our 7900 series bag in the box pump. And then we also have a oscillating pump uh, available. The first pump we're going to cover here is the 7700 series uh, pail pump. Uh, that's the pump that you see right here. Uh, this will the electricity is supplied from the machine and the machine will control this pump. Uh, once you unbox the pump, 
you want to get your pail of oil. Now if you're using an oil like coconut oil, which is solid at room temperature, you're going to have to melt that oil first in order for the pump to, uh, to, to work in the machine. Uh, there's a couple options you can use. We do have a hot rod which is available and basically what this does is when you plug it in it's just a heating element that you're going to insert into the solid oil. As it melts, melts in you're going to push it down in to work it in. There's a little hook on the edge of this uh, on the back side of this hot rod which will allow you to hook it onto the edge of the pail and it'll start the uh, melting process uh, for the oil. You can also use your pump on this pump when you plug it in and we turn the pump switch on this is a heating element that when I turn on this wind up timer will start this heating element uh, to heat and you will set this pump on top of the oil uh, as it starts heating up you'll see it start melting you can also rotate this pump back and forth uh, twist it back and forth in a clockwise and counterclockwise fashion and the little blade that you see on the bottom here will start cutting into the oil and working itself down into the, the, the solid oil. As it gets further down in, it'll start melting it quickly uh, and then it'll start recessing and going all the way down into the pump. Once you get it in there, then you're fine and you can let it uh, liquefy the oil. I have already liquefied the oil here, so to speed things up here, let me just set this cover off to the side. So the first thing we want to do is you'll see here's the power supply for it. I'm going to move the pail in place. I'm going to set my pump in the bucket. Again, if, it, if you have that plugged in and heating it, then it'll already be in there. The pump will also come with the quick disconnect that you see here along with a hose clamp that will connect to the hose from the machine. Now you want to try to keep this hose as short as possible. Uh, so once I get this in a, inside the cabinet here, I'll go ahead and trim this oil tube down uh, to allow the oil to drain back when it's done popping, uh, done pumping I should say. Uh, that'll prevent any oil from being left in the lines and if it's coconut oil we don't want it to solidify in those lines so we want it to drain back into the pump. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the tube, set my pump up in there with the pail. So again, you want to try to keep it as short as possible. If you do need to remove the pail uh, to change the oil, uh, there is a quick disconnect that you see right here. You press that and that will release the oil from it. And of course, the electrical just plugs into the side of the pump. Let me go ahead and plug that in. I'm going to go ahead and cut my tube here and install my quick disconnect. Make sure you put your hose clamp on first, then your quick disconnect. Then you can slide your hose clamp back down, take a quarter inch nut drive or a screwdriver and tighten the clamp. And then you can connect your, your pump oil line to the pump. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we adjust this pump to dispense the proper amount of oil to this machine. And the way we do that is we take our oil measure and we're going to place it underneath the discharge tube that you see inside the cabinet here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the light switch just so you can see that a little bit better. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and activate the pump. So we're going to turn the pump on and then we're going to depress that push button to initiate the cycle. I'm going to keep my measuring cup underneath that discharge tube here. Once you press that button there, you always want to keep your finger by the pump switch in case it looks like it's going to overfill that cup. You can kill that timing cycle just by shutting that pump switch off. And then I'll show you how to make the adjustment on that timer. There's a timer located in the pump on the top of this pump there's a hole plug you pop that hole plug off and the timer will be located underneath there. There's a bank of 10 switches here uh, and they're numbered 1 to 10 
on a decal next to it lists the corresponding time sequence for each of those switches. If you have multiple switches pressed on, you add those times together to give, to, to give you the total time that that pump is going to run for. Uh, each of these switches will just keep doubling in time in case this decal is gone on, a, on an older pump. Uh, but basically switch one is one second, switch two is two seconds, three is four seconds, four is eight seconds, and so on. So if I have switch three and four on, three being four seconds and four being eight seconds, that's going to allow this pump to run a total of 12 seconds. The 7900 series pump is a bag-in-a-box pump. Uh, the bag-in-a-box pump can uh, accommodate two 35-pound boxes of oil. One sits on the upper deck and one sits on the lower deck. Each of these decks are heated. There's a heat pad that will warm this top box up here and then a heat pad that will warm the, the lower box. If you're using liquid oil, it, it really is not going to do much other than keep it warm and make sure that it stays liquid. Uh, if you're using an oil like coconut oil, which solidifies at room temperature, you want to get the heated option. With the heated option, the pump internally inside here is heated, so that will keep that oil warm so it won't solidify. And then the lines also will have a heater uh, that accompanies them or comes with them uh, that keeps the uh, lines warm. Uh, th those heaters will plug into the receptacles that are on the side of the pump. If we're using an oil like coconut oil, which is solid at room temperature, you're going to want to get a backroom warmer. The backroom warmer is just a warming unit that will heat the boxes up and keep the oil liquid so you're able to transfer them over to your pump and use it right away. If, you, if it's a coconut oil, uh, to put it on this warmer will take about 24 hours for it to melt thoroughly through. So having four boxes staged on a warmer ready to go will ensure the, the fact that you won't run out of oil on your pump. Each of these shelves are heated and you could put four boxes of oil on there and that will just sit in the back room. It's a low wattage heater. It will just keep that oil warm so it stay, stays liquid. To connect the 7900 pump, what we want to do first is on a machine, when you get a new machine, you'll have a hose already on there. We want to go ahead and disconnect that hose. Let me go ahead and remove the clamp. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove this hose. First thing I want to do is go ahead and install the rear hose. This is the one that goes from the machine to the rear fitting. I get my pliers. There's a spring clamp on this one. We're going to go ahead and slide it into place. And then slide the spring clamp up to hold the hose onto the tubing. Next, we want to go ahead and remove the shipping caps that are on the pump. And then we're going to go ahead and connect the front hose uh, to the pump. This one has a barb fitting on there that you would just slide on and then take your pliers to slide your spring clamp down to hold the, the tube onto the pump. This being a heated version, you'll also have to connect the heater to it. Just plug it in and then twist the cap. Move this stuff out of the way. Now I want to position this bag in a box pump in front of the machine. I'm going to get, get the uh, power cord for the pump. That's that square plug. That'll plug into the back of the bag in a box pump here. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and slide my pump or bring my pump back. The rear hose has a quick disconnect. That'll allow you to remove the pump if you have to remove it for any reason. Uh, go ahead and slide it down. And then again, this being a heated version pump, we're going to connect the rear heater to the rear receptacle here. Once you have everything connected, we can go ahead and slide this pump in position. The 
box of oil, this one's already liquid here. When you get it, there's an arrow that will indicate the, the position that you should be or direction that you should put the box on the shelf. We'll go ahead and put this box in on the lower shelf. That's generally where you're going to operate the pump from, the lower shelf. You're going to open this cardboard section here. It's perforated. You want to be careful. You don't want to use a knife or anything like that because if you jab into that cardboard and puncture the back ba uh, bag of oil in there, you're going to have a mess. So open up the perforated section of the box. Pull your valve out. Then the bag connector, we want to open it up. It'll just snap open. You'll see this channel here. We're going to slide it down over this groove here on the valve. I'm going to slide it up here, actually. Open the valve all the way. Slide it up in position. Once we get in position, we're going to go ahead, grab the tabs, and push down on the center portion of it. Being that the oil is liquid, you should start seeing the oil fill up in this front tube. Once this front tube fills up, you want to lift this tube up to allow the oil to drain toward the fitting, down toward the gears, which will prime it. And then when we go to initiate it to check our oil, it'll draw the oil through there uh, into the, uh, the kettle. So once we get that all connected, then the next thing we want to do is go ahead and set the time on this pump. On this pump here, the, the timer is located behind this hole plug. You can see that timer right down there along with the dip switches. That's where you'll make your adjustment to adjust the amount of oil that's going to be delivered into that pump. The plug-in timer is just like the 7700 pump timer where you'll notice there'll be a, a bank of 10 dip switches There'll be a decal that'll list the time setting for each of those switches. And each of those switches basically will double in time. So switch one is one second, two is two seconds, three is four seconds, and four is eight seconds. If I have multiple switches on, you add those times together. So if I have switch three, which is four seconds, and switch four, which is eight seconds on, That'll allow this pump to run for a total of 12 seconds. And you can take your measuring cup, stick it up underneath the uh, discharge tube there to check how much oil is being delivered into the kettle. And generally, we, we want about a 3 to 1 ratio of corn to oil. The uh, third option for pumps is the integrated pump or oscillating pump. The pump looks like this. It'll be mounted inside the machine. Go ahead and remove the drop shelf here just to show you where approximately it's mounted. There's a wire box compartment cover here located on the left side of the machine. There's two screws that hold it in place. When you remove that, this pump is located down in this area here. Uh, you'll have a tube that comes out. And this oscillating pump can only be used on liquid oil. You can't use it on like coconut oil uh, where it'll solidify at room temperature because we cannot heat this pump. So it's only used for liquid oil. So that pump's mounted down here. And then you'd have a tube that either you'll put in a pail of oil or you can use it with a boxed oil, but it has to be liquid. With this oscillating pump, we also have a different timer than what we use in the 79 or 7700 pump. It's this little gray timer here. There, there are two adjustment wheels. The top adjustment wheel is what's going to set the range for the lower, larger wheel. And it'll probably be set at 1M, which is one minute. That means this larger wheel on the bottom here uh, will have a range of 0 to 60 seconds. So when you make an adjustment on it, You'll do the same thing. You'll take a, your measuring cup, stick it underneath the discharge tube there. Go ahead and turn your pump on, hit your delivery switch, see how much oil is outputted. And then if you need to increase the amount of oil, you would just rotate that larger dial to add in more time. 
uh, if I have this set at, uh, at uh, 5, because it goes 0 to 10, and the range of that wheel is uh, 0 to 60 seconds, and I have it set at 5, that's obviously going to allow that timer to run for 30 seconds. And then you can, like I said, you can make the adjustment with that large wheel. Again, go ahead and take your measuring cup, stick it, once you make the adjustment, take your measuring cup, stick it underneath that discharge tube there, and then see if you're, you're, you're discharging the, the correct amount of oil into your measuring cup. Once you get that set, that you can put your cover in place. You shouldn't have to make any adjustments on it once it's been set, so you can close that up and then put your other parts back into the machine. Stop. Once you have the pump adjusted correctly and it's dispensing the proper amount of oil for your machine, we can go ahead and bring the kettle back up to the level position. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and fill your salt uh, kind of corn bin up. Again, this is a resealable corn bin, so it's going to, when you close that and, and lock the uh, cover in place, it'll seal the bin tight so the, it, it won't allow the corn to dry out. We're going to go ahead and fill it up. This bin will hold 50 pounds of corn. Okay. Then you want to take your salt container. We're going to fill that salt container up too. You can place that down in the corn bin. Just There's a little uh, hook here which will allow you to hook it to the edge of the bin. I'm going to go ahead and set it in place. And then go ahead and fill it up with your Creter's uh, flavored butter salt. Okay. And then you can snap your bin and of course you can close your uh, drawer back up. I'm going to go ahead and get my corn measure and my salt measure. Now when we go to pop corn, you want to fill your corn measure up first. And tilt this back open. Go ahead and scoop your corn out. Now you want to fill this corn measure up to the lower line here. Make sure that it's level. You don't want to tilt it and fill it all the way up because that's going to put too much corn in there. So when you fill it up, fill it up to the lower line, the lower lip here. Take your salt scoop. You can go ahead and put a scoop of salt in there. Again, you can vary that to taste. If you want more salt, you can put a little more salt or less salt, you can put less. Now I want to go ahead and turn all my switches on for popcorn production. Go ahead and turn my corn conditioner on, exhaust, my agitator, and my kettle heat. And again, you'll see the kettle heat, the digital control is going to blink. Once it senses the temperature of the kettle, it's going to display it. And if it's set below the set point, if the temperature is below the set point, you'll see the indicator light coming on to indicating that the kettle's heating. So at this point, I want to put my corn in first. Then I want to go ahead and press my push button there to deliver the oil into the kettle. You always want to put in corn in first, oil second. That'll just reduce the chances of a, of a flash fire. You want to make sure you do those uh, procedures in the correct order. So I'm going to go ahead and put my corn in. I'm going to go ahead and press my push button here. I can hear the pump running and I can see my oil being dispensed into the kettle there. At that point, you want to go ahead and close your lid. And at the, right now, you can see the kettle starting to climb up in temperature. If I'm going to do another popping, you want to go ahead and get another scoop of corn ready so that once we dump it out, we can add the corn in there uh, to do the next popping cycle. As this thing climbs up in temperature, what we're going to be looking for is the, the kettle to, to finish popping and, uh, about 10 to 20 seconds before we're dumping the kettle. Uh, when we, the machine is shipped from the factory, uh, we set the set point at 390 degrees and you can check that by pressing the button that says set. It's going to show you the set point of the, the kettle which is at 390 right now. And what that means is that once the kettle cycles up and we hit 390, at that point 
the kettle heat will shut off, there's enough residual heat in the kettle to finish off the popping cycle. Uh, and we want that set that way. Uh, we don't want it shutting off after we're done popping. We always want it shutting off before we're done popping, roughly about 10 to 20 seconds. You do have the ability to adjust the temperature up or down. Uh, you press the set button and there's up and down arrow keys here which will allow you to make some adjustments because there are some variables with the different types of corn and also the voltage uh, that's at your location. If it's running a little bit low, you may want to increase the temperature just a couple of degrees just to compensate for that. But we do allow you to make an adjustment, uh, some slight adjustments in the temperature. So as this kettle's heating here, I kind of want to go over some of the other features in this machine here. Uh, the first thing you see are, are these two plexi doors uh, on the machine. Uh, you want to make sure you keep them closed when we have corn inside this machine. That's going to allow the corn conditioner, the heating system in this machine here, keep the, the, the dry that corn out and keep that corn uh, dry and crispy. Uh, also allow it to stay warm in that cabinet. They are lift off plexi doors. If you need to remove them for cleaning, and then just slide them back in place. I'm going to go ahead and open it up so I can cover some of the other features here. The other thing, uh, the other feature on this machine is the drop shelf. You can tilt it forward. It's a stainless steel drop shelf. Uh, you tilt it forward to allow you a little more access and room in the cabinet here uh, to, to get access to the corn when you're, you're scooping it out using your corn measure, I mean corn scoop, to scoop out the corn. The other thing in here, the perforated screen I had mentioned earlier, I'm going to remove it here real quick just so you can see it before it starts popping. You can see all the little holes here and then some larger set of holes in the, in the middle here. The little holes are going to allow that warm air to, to circulate through that corn to keep it dry and crispy. This area here uh, is to allow the small pieces of corn and the unpopped kernels to drop into the clean out drawer. There are handles on the screen which will allow you to remove it and to reinstall it into place. The larger holes, as I had mentioned, when we go to sift this corn here, when I'll show you when we have some corn in here, when you stick your corn measure in here and you start sifting the corn through here, all those small pieces and, and any unpopped kernels will fall into this clean out drawer so that you could uh, throw that in the garbage instead of serving it to your customers. I can hear the kettle starting to pop. We're at about 295 degrees right now. The other thing I want to show here is just the uh, filter that we have in here. It's a disposable filter. Uh, that'll filter that steam that's being generated right now, the steam and the oils. It'll filter this through the filter and out the top of the machine. We're at about 316 degrees here. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this drop shelf forward just in case uh, any corn pops over it. It'll capture all of it and keep it in the cabinet. Once the corn starts popping and the popped corn starts pushing up on this lid, we have an automatic cover lift, lift mechanism up on top, which once the kettle lid gets above the lip of the pan about an inch or so, the mechanism up on top is going to allow that cover to jump up all the way and allow the corn to expand and dispense into the cabinet. That's going to allow for maximum expansion of the corn. We, that, we kept that lid down uh, and the corn would push up and, and press down on it, it would start breaking up the corn uh, and reducing your, your, your expansion. So the key on here is to, once it starts popping, we want to get it out of the kettle as quickly as possible. And the automatic cover lift system will allow that to happen. Right now we're at about almost 380 degrees. Once we hit 390 degrees here, that's our set point, you'll see this indicator light shut off. That tells us that the heat's shut off. 
Right now there's still enough residual heat there to finish off the cycle. You can hear it's starting to slow down. And again, we want that indicator light to shut off about 10 to 20 seconds before we're dumping the kettle. Now this first cycle might be off a little bit because the kettle temperatures haven't stabilized. But if I were to do another popping on it, again, we'd be looking for that light to shut off about 10 to 20 seconds before we're dumping it. Starting to slow down a little bit more. Once it finishes popping, you want to grab your dump handle right here, this handle right here, this knob, and then you can pull down on the kettle and you just want to invert it. That'll allow all the corn to, uh, to drop inside the kettle. You don't need to bang on it uh, a lot. You just want to turn it upside down. Okay, you can see all the corn fall out of the kettle. Bring it back up to the level position. If I were to do another uh, popping at this point, I would go ahead and put my corn inside the kettle first, go ahead and deliver my oil, and then close the lid. Since I'm not going to pop anymore, you always want to make sure you shut your kettle heat switch off and shut your agitator switch off. You don't need to leave that on. You also want to close the lid. You can see right now since the kettle's really hot, there's some residual oil still left on the pan. Air is getting in there. It's allowing it to, to steam and smoke. By closing the lid, you're going to re reduce that smoke. It's not going to, uh, air is not going to get in there and it's not going to smoke as bad. So you always want to close the lid when you're done popping. Now you want to go ahead and sift your corn. You're going to take your corn scoop. And when you start sifting the corn, you don't want to jab or just go right into the corn because you're going to start hacking at it and start breaking it up. And again, that's going to reduce the, 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 the quality of the corn because it's, you're going to have a lot of small pieces. So what you want to do, you always want to take your scoop down to the metal, to that perforated screen, and then go ahead and sift the corn over that opening, over that area there where the large holes are. And you can hear some of those unpopped kernels, and of course the small pieces of corn are going to drop into that clean-out drawer. So you just want to sift that around there a little bit. Once you've done that, go ahead and push the corn forward to the front glass. Go ahead and close your drop shelf. And of course, you want to make sure you close your plexiglass doors to allow the corn conditioner to work a little more efficiently in keeping that corn dry. You also have the clean-out drawer I had mentioned. Let me just show you. You can see some of those unpopped kernels and, and the small pieces of corn. You're going to want to remove that depending on the usage of the machine, maybe once or two or three times a day. If the machine is being used quite extensively or heavily, you definitely want to try to get that out and, and throw out the unpopped kernels and any small pieces out of that drawer. What I want to do now is go through the cleaning procedure uh, of the machine using our cleaning kit that we have available. The uh, Creators Cleaning Kit uh, will come with the parts that you see here. Uh, there's two different size pads depending on which kit uh, you get. One is the 12 inch diameter pad which is for the smaller 12 inch diameter kettles. These are custom made for us. The uh, material that's used to make this pad is similar to the uh, material that's used for cleaning Teflon pan, pad, uh, pans. Uh, so it's very friendly to the, our, our surfaces of our, our pans, the nickel finishes on our pan. The uh, pack will come with five pads which are reusable. Uh, when you use it, uh, and I'll demonstrate how to do that, when you're done you can rinse it out, let it dry, and then you can use it again. They'll last a long time. Uh, the pack does come with uh, five of these inside it. Uh, it'll also come with some high temperature gloves for cleaning to pr protect your hands from some of the cleaning products that we're going to use inside the, uh, the kettle. You'll get this large tub here to capture the liquid when we go to dump it, uh, the cleaning solution. It'll capture all of that inside that tub. You'll get a, a canister of our inside kettle cleaner which I'll show you how to use that. It's a powder type 
product. You can see it here. The outside cl kettle cleaner, which is used to clean the outside surfaces of the pan, that's more of a pasty, liquidy type uh, consistency. And I'll show you how to use that. You'll get the stainless steel cleaner, which is the cleaner used to clean all of the cabinet uh, parts in the machine. You also get a little pad, a small pad, which will allow you to clean the sides of the pan and the outside of it. Uh, it it's also made of that same material that's used for Teflon pans, so it's very safe for the uh, finish of the pan. You also get a little brush here, which will allow you to clean up the, the drive shaft connector, which I'll show you how to do. Uh, and there's also an instruction uh, sheet that lists all of the, uh, the parts too, so if you need to order any of the uh, cleaning supplies, you can go ahead and do that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to let the kettle cool down. You don't want to clean the kettle when it's still at that hot temperature that we were just popping at. You want to let it cool down to about room temperature. Uh, and you don't want to throw ice cold water in a hot kettle or ice in a kettle because you will damage the pan. It'll, it'll cause it structurally to, to start warping on you. So you do want to let it cool down and use warm water in the pan. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and take your cleaning gloves. I'm going to go ahead and put these on, show you how to use this kit. And again, let the kettle cool down to room temperature. I'm going to go ahead and remove this drop shelf just by pulling in on these tabs will allow me to pull that drop shelf out. I'm going to take my cleaning tub, set it down inside the cabinet of the machine. I'm going to lift the cover up here. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the stirrer blade because we'll have to uh, place the pad on the bottom. There's a pin here that holds the blade in place. Once you remove that pin, you can remove your blade. And then the first thing you want to do is take some of that inside kettle cleaner, take a small scoop, and put a couple tablespoons inside the pan. Then take one of your cleaning pads, set it down in the pan, and then go ahead and put your stir blade back in place. Now we don't have to use the, the pin to hold it down because we're just going to do this cleaning procedure once. So once we dump it, we'll be pulling the blade out. So just set your blade in place on top of that pad. Then we're going to take a couple of cups of water. You just want enough water to cover the bottom surface of that pan. You don't want to overfill the kettle because you put too much water in there. When we turn our agitator on, if there's too much water in there, it's going to allow all that water to spill inside the cabinet. So you just want enough to cover the bottom surface of that pan. So I can see the, the water starting to cover the top of that pad. So now what you want to do is go ahead and turn on your agitator. You're going to want to turn your exhaust on too. And then we want to turn the heat on. You'll see it lock in and it's going to show the temperature of the kettle. Right now it's at 75 degrees. We want to allow that to get up to about 190, 200, right before it, it hits that boiling point. Once it hits that temperature, we're going to go ahead and shut the kettle heat off and close the lid. Uh, and then what's going to happen is that, that hot water and steam inside there is going to start steaming the inside of the kettle and we're going to let it run for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we will uh, uh, shut the agitator off and, and then dump that solution out. So let's let it heat up to about 190 degrees, and then I'll, I'll show you what we need to do. As you can see, we're at about 178 degrees right now. You can see the steam being generated uh, inside the kettle. So when you hit about, like I said, about, one, about 190, at 190 we can shut the heat off because there's enough residual heat there which will carry it up to the boiling point 
And, and at that point, we want to, 190, I just shut it. We want to close this lid to allow it to steam and clean the inside of this kettle. So I'm going to go ahead and close that lid. We're going to leave the agitator run for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we'll go ahead and open it up and dump that solution out, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's let the kettle clean here for about 15 minutes. So the kettle's been steaming for about 15 minutes. So what we want to do now is go ahead and open our lid up. Kettle's still going to be hot, so be careful. We're going to shut our agitator off. And at this point, we're going to start removing the uh, blade and the pad and placing it down into our tub over here. So go ahead and dump, dump it slightly to where you're able to remove the stir blade. Place it down in your tub. And then before we dump the solution, we want to take that pad out and place it down in the tub. What that's going to do is when we go to dump the solution, the pad's going to absorb some of that water and prevent it from splashing all over the place. So let's go ahead and remove that pad. We're going to place it down in the tub. And then I'm going to dump, go ahead and dump my cleaning solution down into the tub. As you can see, that kind of absorbs that water and prevents it from splashing all over inside the cabinet. Now, you can go ahead and take your little pad here, use that, that hot cleaning solution here to clean out the rest of the pan, the side, and kind of finish up the uh, cleaning process uh, that we started here. Okay. Now, we want to go ahead and remove the cover pieces and the shaft here. First thing I'm going to do is release this uh, cover lift arm from the cover here by removing the clip. Set it down in your tub. Then there's a clip that holds the shaft onto this connector. Again, set that in your tub. That'll allow the shaft to pull straight down and allow you to remove the cover and you can place inside your tub here. You also have that little brush that I had showed you earlier. You can use that to clean the inside of this connector here and that's especially important if you're doing sugar corn because uh, sugar corn will build up on that, the sugar will build up on that shaft and we want to make sure that we have that spring action of that shaft otherwise if it gets stuck in the up position it's not going to uh, turn that stir blade. So you can use your cleaning solution down in here, the hot cleaning solution, to get up inside that connector to clean up any of the stuff that's built up in there, whether it's sugar or oil in there. Make sure that area is clean. At that point, you can take your tub with all your parts, take it to the sink, use that cleaning solution to clean up those parts, rinse everything off thoroughly, and then bring it and reinstall it in the pan. I'm going to take this to the sink to clean this up, and then I'll show you how to install everything back into the pan. So I've cleaned off all of those parts. The, the only thing before we start uh, installing everything is you want to take a damp rag and just kind of wipe out the inside of the pan, get some of the, the residual cleaning uh, uh, product out of there. Once you get it all wiped up, then we can go ahead and, and put everything together. So the first thing you do want to do is take your shaft, slide it through your cover. When you set your cover in place, make sure you line up the oil tube to go through the oil discharge hole there on the cover. Slide your shaft back up, take your pin. Make sure you line up the hole with the slot in the connector. Snap that in. That'll hold the shaft. Then we can take the clip for the cover lift. Go ahead and slide the cover lift down over the cover center there and get the clip in place. Then we can go ahead and put our stir blade back into our pan. 
and then use the clip to secure it to the, the post, the pan center. Okay. Now, the outside kettle cleaner I had mentioned is more like a paste. And what you do is take a damp rag, put a little bit of that uh, outside kettle cleaner on your rag, and then go ahead and work it onto the pan. It's kind of like a, a wax or a polish. It does have a little pumice in it, a little, a little bit of abrasive, but it's, it's not going to damage the finish. Once you get it all on that, that surface there, you want to leave it there let it dry up. It'll haze over a little bit at which point you'll take another damp rag or a dry rag and I should say and then buff that out and that'll clean the outside of the pan. So let it haze up here a little bit and then we'll come back in and buff it out. Once that outside kettle cleaner is kind of hazed over on the outside take a, a, a dry cloth and kind of just buff that out. You can see how, how it's cleaned up the outside and polished it up. and make sure you get all of it off. Once you get all that outside kettle cleaner on there, uh, buffed off, at that point the kettle's clean, then we're going to want to go ahead and clean the rest of the, uh, the cabinet and the, and the machine. You want to make sure you remove any popcorn that was left in the cabinet. Obviously take that all out of the cabinet there. There is a perforated screen that has handles that you can remove. You want to make sure you clean this all off so that the holes in this perforation don't get plugged up. This is where the hot air gets forced up through these holes through the corn to keep the corn nice and, and dry. So you want to make sure you wipe this all down and get any of that corn uh, so it's not plugging up the holes. You can take the, re the remaining stuff that's left in this cabinet here and just kind of sweep it all into this clean out drawer. Once you do that, you could take your clean out drawer, take that to the garbage, and empty that out, wipe it all down. I'm going to go ahead and take that to the garbage, and I'll be right back. I've cleaned out my clean out tray. I'm going to set that off to the side here. Then we have our stainless steel cleaner, which you can spray on all the stainless steel surfaces of the machine. Uh, actually, I like spraying it on the towel and then you can use that to wipe up all of those surfaces. Also on the inside of the cabinet you can clean up all of those corner pieces and the rest of the cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and put my machine back together here, put my clean out drawer in place, and take my screen, hold it by the handles, send it down in the cabinet. You can take a damp rag, maybe with some mild detergent or some soap, to clean up the glass uh, of the machine on the inside of the cabinet and the outside. Once you get the glass clean, we can go ahead and take our drop shelf. If you need it to wash it up, obviously you can remove this, take it to the sink to clean it. Set it back in place. And then the last thing would be the doors. The plexiglass doors are, you can lift them off, to remove them for cleaning, take them to the sink. Just use some uh, warm water and some soap. Don't use anything abrasive on the door because you will scratch it. So, so just some mild soap and, and uh, warm water will, will clean the doors up really well. At that point, your mach machine is clean and ready for the next day. The only other thing I want to touch upon is the filter that's inside the machine. 
Now it's not something that you're going to clean on a daily basis. The filter is a, a removable, disposable filter. Once it gets saturated, at that point you want to go ahead and, and remove it and clean the housing and replace it. You'll notice there are several layers here along with a thin layer of charcoal. Once this filter gets saturated, you want to go ahead and remove it. You can throw that away, take your housing, wash it out thoroughly, and then replace it with a new filter. When you insert that filter, you want to make sure you have it such that the charcoal is going to go nearest the intake of that blower. So make sure you install it correctly. And then go ahead and set your filter back in place. Now that filter really, as far as how often you're going to replace that, really depends on the usage of your machine. Uh, but basically what you want to do is kind of keep an eye on it, at least the first couple of times, kind of determine when you're going to need to replace it. Once it gets saturated and you start seeing some oil uh, dripping out of there, you want to take it back about a week. So if it's, it's about at the eight week mark when you see it dripping, then you know about every seven weeks you want to go ahead and replace that filter. Those are the uh, steps needed to set up your Mach 5 machine and the proper sequence and, and for the popping of the machine. If you do have any questions, please contact our offices at 1-800-228-1885 or email me at akarkowski at creators.com.